What's up, YouTube? Today I am presenting a look at Michael Knight and Kit, collectibles from the classic TV series Knight Rider. Airing from 1982 to 1986, Michael Long, as he started out, after losing his identity and reluctantly joining the Knight Foundation, became Michael Knight and teams up with Kit to fight criminals who operate above the law. The car and figure were the only ones produced in 1983. The mainstream villains of the TV show were not made, such as Garth Knight, Goliath, or Carr. Though Garth Knight could be customized out of a Michael Knight, as they were pretty much exact twins, and the same goes for Kit and Carr. Taking a look at the figures, you'll notice that, as I said, there were only one made. There was only one made. I have two. And that is because one of them is a, a custom. The one on the right is the original version. I'll bring these two guys up so you can get a better look at them. Take car out of focus. There we go. As you can see, the only differences really are in paint. That's all I did was repaint the figure. Uh, I made Michael's hair darker, though it's not really showing up on camera. I tried to give it a wash, so because a lot of times in the show, Michael's hair, as the sun would hit it, would show up in different shades. Another major difference is in skin tone. I felt that the originals was too light and he was almost dead looking. Also added eyebrows. Uh, I didn't do it because I felt that the figure was like really bad. I did it for fun. Um, I had two of them anyway. I completely repainted his outfit just for the hell of it. Uh, the red is a slightly orangish tint to it. The jacket pretty much looks the same. I also changed the color of the belt, making the uh, strap black instead of brown. And the buckle, silver instead of gold. I brightened up the pants. I just preferred that color, and why not? I also prefer the uh, the darker burgundy for the uh, cowboy boots. The articulation on these guys is the same. The the head. Let's get this guy out of the way. The head does a 360. The arms do a 360, and the leg because up and down motion, each of the limbs doing the same articulation. These were figures produced in 1983, so their articulation is very limited, but they do fit in well with other 6-inch figures. Here they are with other 6-inch figures, and as you can see, they fit in really well. Um, I guess you could say they were pretty much ahead of their time. Moving on and taking a look at the car. Taking a look at the car, Kit has his trademark front scanner. It's a sticker, not an LED, though from a distance it could fool people. Mine has lots of scuffs and scrapes as I bought mine secondhand. Brand new ones can go for up to $300, which if I had that kind of money, I would drop it just because I love Knight Rider. He does have the uh, Night 2000 sticker that was not shown in the show, but added for the toy. Mine has a poor speaking ability. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but I pushed it twice. It's really bad. The doors do open both of them you can see inside the car there as you can see it's got nice detail especially for a toy made in 83 again it could be customized painted on the inside um, I think the interior was a little darker or it could just be my memory Oh, 
Wheels roll just fine. Michael does fit in the car. I'm not lying, he does. <laughs> there we go. I wonder if we could fit Lucas a passenger. Let's find out. Lucas, no damsel in distress, which is typically what Michael Knight would be saving. But he's a celebrity passenger. They've had those too. Yep. Luke fits just fine. So you could pretty much pop any six inch figure into there. I don't know if bulky Superman will fit, and I'm not going to try. But yeah. Um, it's a great little piece to have for any hardcore Knight Rider fan. Or somebody who just really likes to collect classic figures and classic toys. Like I said, uh, the cheapest one I've seen on eBay for the new for a new one, like with the box, is three hundred bucks. Uh, looking on eBay today, I always like to browse it. There was an auction for like over a hundred dollars for it used, but it looked pretty good. The car was descriptive as not working, which most do. The one I got. And something you should watch out for when shopping on eBay. Listed it as untested. Now people who listed untested most likely tested it, found it didn't work, and then said screw it. And rather than putting it blatantly doesn't work, they'll just say untested. So you get that, there'll be people who like get that false hope. Give me a break. Who doesn't have a couple batteries lying around to pop it in and test it? That's what it takes. It takes, I think, one battery. I think it's a C or D battery. I forget. It's been a minute since I put them in. It's not that hard to test. So to say that they didn't test it, to me, I think that's horse. They're lying. It's probably broken. So assume you're bidding on something broken. It's just a way of covering their butts. So when you complain that it doesn't work, they'll be like, well, we didn't test it, so we didn't know. We didn't know it was broke. Anyway, this has my, been my look at the uh, Knight Rider from Kenner, produced in 1983 from the classic series Knight Rider, the television show. Uh, please let me know what you think of the, uh, the toys, if you plan to collect them, if you already have them, if you, uh, have ever done a custom car or a custom Garth Knight. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one, guys.